Hey guys, it's Monday, July the 3rd, and let me ask you a question. Is there anything worse than getting conned, than just totally being lied to and presented with information that is not true and believing it? I would argue that there is. There is something worse than that. And that's refusing to believe the truth and see that you've been conned and own up to it and admit it and move on. And I'm here to tell you, I got conned. Uh, all that talk about the six brigades moving on Lysachansk and Severodonetsk that I reported on the other day. It appears that that was a Ukrainian military counterintelligence operation designed uh, for what purpose? I, I don't know. It would be speculation uh, to cause confusion in the ranks, to see how they would respond if they believed that there was a large brigade assault coming at them, uh, to draw reserves from somewhere else uh, so that they're more vulnerable where the real attack is coming. I don't know why. But, you know, I've been watching the Russian mill bloggers and telegram channels because uh, the trolls in the comments are always like, what's your source? The Ukrainian MOD? You can't trust them. Well, how about Eugeny Prigozhin, right? Let's ask Eugene what he thinks. Let's ask Igor Gherkin what he thinks, right? Those are sources these trolls can't argue with. So I've been watching the Telegram channels and when they lit up the other night about this big multi-brigade assault and calling for help and reinforcements and out of ammunition and blah, 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 I believed it. I believed it. It does not appear to be what was happening. And now this is the second time that this has happened. Um, I look back at all the videos that I've put up in the last month and today is one month, well, it's four weeks. Today is 28 days that I've been doing this. And I look back at all my videos over the last two days and I stand by every everything and everything else is factual and accurate. I challenge anybody to challenge me on any of the facts presented anywhere in any of those other videos. But I got conned. I was not the object of the con. You were not the object of the con. The object of the con were the Russians and that was my source. So guys, I do believe that it is far worse to let yourself continue to be fooled by something and not face the reality and admit it openly and move forward. And what I'm going to do is make a commitment to you to be more cautious. I suffer confirmation bias like everybody else. I want to believe that the righteous wrath of the Ukrainian people are going to sweep the Russian invaders from their lands. I, I, I don't want to believe it. I do believe it. I know it to be true. That is what is going to happen eventually. Right now, it looks like the Ukrainians are very carefully fixing Russian troops in place, exhausting their resources, exhausting their ammunition, hitting their artillery, destroying their ability to make war while preserving Ukrainian lives. But here's the thing. How do you get the other side to run out of ammunition? They have to use it. So what it looks like to me is these probing attacks, these reconnaissance and force attacks on the front lines that are very cautiously slicing up the front lines and making slow advances. What the implication of that really is that these brave men and women are putting themselves out there as targets to exhaust the, the, the Russian artillery and ammunition. That's what's really going on. And the Ukrainians don't have the people to lose or to throw away the way that the Russians are. It's going this way because we in the West have held back. We haven't given them patriots. We haven't given them the ATACMs that they need. 
I'm not a big fan of cluster munitions. They're, they're a post-war problem, uh, from what I understand. Uh, these cluster munitions, it's instead of just one round, it's like a shotgun shell, right? It's lots of little rounds. And the problem with them is, even with good ones like the U.S. has, sometimes as many as 15% of those rounds don't explode. And they're just left on the ground looking like a little ball that a kid will pick up. That's now the United States has not joined the ban on these weapons, but other NATO countries have. So it's a it's a tricky one. Ukrainians are asking for them. We don't mostly use them anymore. We got them in mothballs mostly, from what I understand. Um, if they really want them, and if it could make a difference. Maybe we ought to think about giving them up. But what we definitely ought to give up is out of our own stockpiles today, we should transfer ATACMs and Patriots to these people. The Patriots, they need to down the helicopters. The helicopters can fire on their forward positions from 10 kilometers out. What they have to hit those helicopters with only goes eight kilometers. So the helicopters can hang back and fire with impunity. That's why the Ukrainians are moving cautiously, slowly. We can help them out. We can help end this thing. And we should. Ladies and gentlemen, my friends in the United States, please send an email to your representative. Take five minutes. It takes five minutes. Send emails to your representatives. Send emails to your senators. Let them know that you support. We're not in any danger. We don't need patriots in New York. We don't need patriots in Washington. We don't need, right? We do not need them today. This is where the fight is. This is where the fight of democracy against autocracy is, and only the Ukrainians are bleeding. For the love of God, please, let's stop the bleeding. Thanks, guys. Happy Independence Day, everybody in the States. Please have a burger and a beer on me. Take care.